Being on the same wavelength as your client before starting the brand design process is crucial to make sure that the outcome is exactly what the client was looking for. This is why mood boards are one of the most important steps to cover. And in this video, we're going to go over everything. How do you make them, what to include, and how to present them in the most efficient way to clients. Ciao besties, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Viviana and if you're new here, on this channel I talk a lot about brand design and the secrets behind building a brand. Before jumping into today's topic, if if you find value in this video, make sure to let me know and push the like button below. Alright, let's talk mood boards. Building a brand doesn't start with designing a logo. Sure, you could design a cool logo and call it a day, but how do you know if that logo is going to help the business and if it's going to help them reach their goals? To do that, you need a vision first, and what's the best way to achieve that? Well, you guessed it, mood boards. First, we're going to go over what you need and what elements to include, and then we're going to move on to making them and presenting them. Mood boarding usually takes place during the brand strategy process. If you're not familiar with that and you want to know more, I made a whole video about it so you can check it out here later. But there's actually something you need before starting making your mood boards. Sometimes it's not that easy for clients to put into words what their vision is, so the best thing to do in my opinion is have them put together a board with all their ideas. In my process, this is the very first step. Before onboarding the client and actually booking them, we need to understand if our creative styles match and if I'm the right designer for the project. So what I asked them to do in my inquiry form on my website is to link me a Pinterest board that they have made. This is a very easy process and not as complicated as it sounds. Pinterest basically does all the work for you, but I understand that it can be intimidating for people, especially people who don't have a design background, which will be most of your clients. More than once, I've had people tell me, I didn't put together a mood board because I don't know how. I trust you and I want you to come up with a concept. As flattering as that might sound, this is actually the wrong way to go about this. You are your own person with your own taste and your own references and so is your client. Of course you will guide the client along the way but at the end of the day you are building their brand so the initial vision has to come from them. So if you're a designer and you have come across this situation before next time link this video to your client because right now I'm gonna show you what needs to be included in a client Pinterest board. For the purpose of this video I came up with a new client for us to work with together. The brand is called Spitzica Chips and they sell chips of all kinds but they specialize in low calorie low fat healthy chips so let's take a look at this initial pinterest board that this imaginary client lead me in the inquiry form so as you can see there is a lot going on there are many colors that don't necessarily tell the same story there are a lot of ideas a lot of types of typography so actually the type direction isn't really clear in this board there are a lot of different styles of packaging also we have some packaging with pictures and then we have some packaging with illustration so the direction isn't clear even in this case and as for the colors we have bright colors bright reds bright oranges and then on the other hand we also have greens and then brown so you know the vision isn't quite there yet but there is a base and i think that this is a good base to start with like if i actually got this board from a client i would accept the client and move on with the project because i like the individual elements i see myself and my style in these individual elements and i know that they have a lot of potential this is great this is a great place to start you don't have to come up with the creative direction all on your own you know you just have to add a few elements to kind of guide the designer and uh, let them know what you like what you don't like so there's a lot of ways that we could go about it we could use a really rounded and friendly typography using really bright colors or we could use these earthy colors these greens and oranges and browns that i really love and really focus on the healthy aspect of the brand because you know it's important but is it really what the client wants or do they want to be known for selling chips in general these are all things that will be discussed later on now that we know that the client and i share the same creative style so after the client is booked that's when the real process starts during the brand strategy process you will ask your clients many questions about their business goals their values their ideal audience and so many other things but you will also ask them about their taste about the colors and fonts that they like and that they don't like the creative direction for the mood boards will be built with this information you will have to create concepts that merge the client's vision with the business strategy and goals that you discussed so let's have a quick overview of Spitzica Chips strategy. Their target audience is literally anyone because who doesn't love chips, but more specifically, they will be targeting 20 to 40 year old people of all genders. And these people will be people who love to snack, but they want to stay healthy. So they're looking for a healthy snack. The goals for the business
business are brand recognition so we have to make sure to stand out they want to connect with their audience and have a strong social media presence their values are staying healthy of course because of the chips enjoying life because who doesn't love to snack and being accessible we know that healthy low calorie low fat products usually cost a little bit more than usual but spitzika chips wants to be a brand that is accessible to anyone this is just a very quick overview of the strategy of course there's a lot more that goes into it but this will be the main things that we will focus on moving on so knowing all of this now it's time to start making those mood boards and coming up with creative directions for the business i personally give my clients two mood boards to choose from usually the first one leans more towards their vision while the second one has a little bit more of my creative touch that's where i might present some ideas that haven't been discussed necessarily but that i think have good potential for the project so to get started i made two pinterest boards that are going to become actual mood boards let's take a look at the first one so in board number one we are really leaning more towards the warm welcoming and accessible colors like the ones that you saw in the client's pinterest board so we have a lot of oranges yellows and reds and uh, here you can see everything that you're gonna be needing in order to make a good mood board first of all you will obviously need some type inspiration i work a lot with type so to me that's one of the most important things to add for this concept i'm thinking about a really simple font that has some sort of edits and customizations that make it fun i want it to be rounded and friendly and as i said accessible to anyone and as for the packaging i was thinking about having some photos of the products on the bag so actually showing what the chip looks like because as we said there's a lot of chips so it's good to show the customer what they're actually buying and i want it to be pretty simple because i don't want a lot going on since there's gonna be photography on it yeah i mean this is pretty much the inspiration for it another really important thing to add in your boards is photography people always seem to forget about this but photography and imagery in general is very 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 important i know that it seems like it doesn't really say anything or add anything because you know what the brand is but it actually helps create like an entire concept when you're looking at the mood board when you look at that you know exactly what the mood board is going to be used for so i have some pictures about the texture of the chips i love this picture here and i'm actually getting pretty hungry and i also have picture of people eating and smiling leaning on this happy and welcoming and friendly feeling of the brand usually in my own mood boards i never add actual color palettes because i make the color palette using the other pins that i add so usually i sample the colors from the picture and then i tweak them but this is just a pinterest board now it's time to actually make the board and create an actual concept around it so here we are in adobe illustrator and as you can see i have imported all the pictures that we're going to be using usually i like to group them based on what they are so we have the type then we have the imagery and then we have the packaging first let's start with the typography always remember to alternate all the elements so you give a little bit of variation so here next to the typography we're gonna put a picture and then here we're gonna put some packaging i want to show the picture on the packaging but also of this fruit and these vegetables because you know being healthy is still a very important part of the brand then we put some packaging here i want to focus on this green because i think it looks very good i obviously still want to add the greens even if we mostly have oranges yellows and reds one thing that i love to do in mood boards is cut the pictures in a specific way when i was at uni and we were working on book covers we had an entire class about how to cut pictures and how cutting a picture in a specific way can change the meaning of it and i always love to bring what i learned in that class here i don't know why to me it makes such a difference i love this so right now we don't really have a lot of greens in the mood board and i don't like that i want the green to be a very important color as well so one trick that i do most of the time is in my mood boards is change the colors of some pins especially the type so we're gonna do just that we're gonna take this one here and we're gonna change the color it's like dead lilac is not it so we're gonna sample a color all you have to do is play with these options here let's try a few oh yeah color i love this this is so cute okay perfect this is the color that i was envisioning do you see how much better it is already it feels more cohesive more connected to the brand values and i just love it of course we are now missing colors so i will sample the colors from the pictures and tweak them a little bit and i will be right back so this is the color palette that i came up with as you can see there are oranges yellows reds 
pink and of course green i wanted like a really bright green not like a nursy green because we're gonna do that in the other concept spoiler i wanted this concept to feel friendly welcoming warm and just accessible to anyone the type is very rounded and friendly again and kind of also reminds me of the shape of some chips not all chips but just you know the regular chips like the curves of a chip which is always good like to connect the brand to the topography so the first mood board is done but as i said every mood board will be accompanied by a creative direction you can just show the mood board you also have to explain the mood board and motivate your choices i usually write a little breakdown of every section the typography the colors the packaging whatever the brand needs so for example in this case let's take a look at the creative direction Of course, in the mood board, you will add some annotations to kind of explain a little bit better why you chose that specific picture. Stay tuned for the end of the video because I will tell you a little bit more about this as well. Now let's take a look at the second Pinterest board. So in this case, we have a completely different vibe. The colors are very earthy and natural and organic. These browns and oranges are amazing to kind of display this brand value. All these greens, I think that would be amazing because at the end of the day, we are still working on a brand the focuses on being healthy so i know that using greens could be expected but we're gonna use them in our own way to make this brand unique and have that clear brand recognition that they want so as you can see here the typography is really particular because it's very different from concept one in concept one we had round letters that are friendly and inviting and welcoming but in this concept we have a completely different style in this pin here you can see like what i'm thinking about i want to kind of mix a really simple font with a really like sharp but still fun font because you know chips are round most of the times but if you break them they have sharp edges and uh, i want to kind of embrace that i don't want the type to be intimidating or something absolutely not i still want it to feel modern and fresh and uh young i don't know why i'm having this idea well the target audience is 20 to 40 year people so we still want to attract young adults and um, i think that having a concept like this could really grab their attention because you don't really see this kind of typography in other chip businesses and also for the colors we have a lot of green and the packaging here is really gonna be different because i want it to be like mainly type based because as i just said the typography is gonna be really particular so i want it to be like the main thing and we're gonna have some illustrations that are a little bit more like abstract like in this pin here so yeah this concept is like really different from the first one but both of them still embrace the brand values really well so of course it's up to the client to choose so yeah let's take this to adobe illustrator and do the same as that thing that we just did so here we are again i gathered the typography imagery and packaging in the same way that i did in concept one and you know i'm just gonna be doing the same as that thing so let's skip to the finished mood board okay here we are i love this i don't want to influence you in any way but i really love this i love the addition of the pink and the orange and also the yellow so you know the drill this is not it we also have to make a creative direction for it so let's take a look So these are the two mood boards. As you can see, they look very different and choosing one or the other can really change the path that the branding is gonna take. Once the client has chosen the mood board and is sure about the direction, then designing the logo suite and the rest of the branding will be way easier because both of you will know exactly what to do and what to expect. You never want your client to say something like, you know what, let's change the font, let's change the colors. This step prevents this from happening and will help make the process easier and smoother. So now we know not only how to make a mood board but also how to make sure that it is exactly what the client is looking for so what do you guys think about this mood board oh my god how many times have i said mood board i obviously want to develop this branding so make sure to comment your favorite one below is it number one or number two the one with the most votes will be the chosen one and we will use it to build an entire branding in a future video so go crazy in the comments let me know down below if you found this video helpful make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this and if you're still wondering where brand strategy is and how you can level up your client presentations then check out these two videos here thank you so much for watching i will see you again in another video next week ciao